Open your Bibles with me as we continue in Revelation. Revelation. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. We know that. And uh, we we're looking at past, present. We're going to move into future. We started that in chapter 4 of last week. Some of you still remember that. And as we concluded last week, the conclusion, if you remember, was with praise and worship, really. It was worship unto the Lord. And, uh, and that session ended with them crying out, The elders, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. For you created all things, and by your will, or uh, they, are, they exist, or for your pleasure they exist. God created everything for His pleasure. Don't, don't you remember that? And it says, for that reason they were created. So, the conclusion of chapter 4, and as we move into chapter 5, I want you to know something. This is not very spiritual, but it's, it's something that you can take home, home with you. Um, there are certain areas in Scripture that I've noticed, just studying through Scripture, and you have too, uh, where they have put periods or commas or chapters and so forth. Now, you, you would know also that when the books were written, there was no chapters or verses. Okay? It was only about a little over 500 years ago that, we saw a little, just the other day, <laughs> over 500 years ago when they started taking the scriptures, the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, divided it, and then also made uh, chapters and verses for us. And, and I know that's, that's a quick reference. We can go quickly to certain books. That's how we do that. But it was not like that. When they opened the scrolls, it had the books, but there was no chapters or so forth. So in this particular incident, I also think that uh, verse chapter number four should just be a continuation because they're talking about the same scene as we're going to note now in chapter 5. It's, he's still talking about the same, really the same thing that he speaks of in chapter 4. Uh, so it's not a big deal. It's just to note that sometimes we read and we stop. And, and what that does for me sometimes, it, it's stopped the flow for me or the uh, continuation like I wanted to. So now they break it up and that's okay. It's not a big deal. Another one is when they talk about uh, Hebrews uh, chapter 11, the chapter of faith. When you go to Hebrews 10, the latter part of that should, uh, you, you should really, if you read that, it should just continue on because it starts off, now faith. He was still speaking about some things concerning this and then he, can, and he, and he speaks and says, now faith. Okay, so that's just a little extra, okay? And so tonight we want to start in chapter number 5, verse number 1. And it says, I saw, still in heaven, still the same scene, still the throne, everything's still there. And then he says, in addition, and he says, and. So that's conjunction or continuation. And he says, and I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne. What did he see? A scroll, right? And he says the scroll has some things written on it, written on the inside and on the outside of the back. But here's the thing, it was sealed with seven seals, this scroll. Today we go to Israel to the Wailing Wall. Some of you mentioned the Wailing Wall or the Western Wall. That's the only remaining wall of the temple of Solomon or Herod's temple. Okay? That still remains of it. You see this big wall. That's the Western Wall of the temple. If you go down, had the privilege of going down, you can see the, the footings of it. I mean, the, the, the stone that's holding up this thing. So, and as you move in there, the Jews still today, the old Orthodox Jews, will have scrolls that they will unroll for you, or open up scrolls to read portions of this, the Torah, mainly is what they read, the Old Testament, uh, Psalms and, and different writings of Moses. But he said, I saw the scroll, and it was written on there, front and back, sealed with seven seals. Verse number two, and I saw a strong angel. It's, it's, it's uh, interesting to me that he notes a strong angel. Uh, I'll let you know there is no such a thing as a weak angel, either. <laughs> Just in case you thought, I'll take one on. <clears throat> Ask Jacob how that worked out for him. 
okay? Just because it denotes strong angel, it's probably not the right uh, translation from the Hebrew, but he does say strong angel, so you, you, you probably see a very large, very big, uh, and also the voice that speaks, okay, for, with this angel. He says, a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice. I think earth is going to be the most quiet place you've ever going to be in. <laughs> church, you know, there will be people who shh, church. This is quiet. You better enjoy this because when we get to heaven, I believe the Bible says that hallelujahs and the amens will be like thunder up there. Amen. <laughs> Some of these people are going to go up in there in heaven. Oh my goodness, it's loud in here. <laughs> Well, we're trying to help you over here, okay? <laughs> Get you used to some of that a little bit. But he said, this angel with a strong voice, with a loud voice, proclaiming, what is he saying? Who is worthy to open the book or the scroll and to loose the seals thereof? Seven seals. Remember the one on the throne had the throat scroll in his hand. And if you continue reading in verse number 3, it says, And no one, somebody say no one, no. in heaven or in earth or under the earth, wow, was able to open the scroll. In one moment, John knew that no one in heaven, no one on the earth, no one beneath, there was no one worthy to open the scroll. It needed to be somebody worthy. Now, there are, by the tens of millions of angels, I believe, hundreds of thousands of them, not one of the angels, not even Gabriel, not even Michael, was worthy to open the seal. Otherwise, they would have said, well, Michael, you come and open it. None of the 24 elders was worthy to open the seal. Not even the created beings. Remember, there were four of them with their six wings. It's a wonderful scene in heaven, but and John said, when I saw no one that was worthy to open the seal or to, to, to open the seal or open the book as I looked at it. Look what he says now. In other force, he says, I so I wept much. And then began to weep. Why would John weep? Over a scroll, over a book that no one was worthy to open. I believe that book that was written, what was written in there, uh, uh, behind the seals was something so tremendous and so awesome that it, it held literally the key to humanity, to what would happen to us. And he, he, he thought, well, if that seal will not be opened, if nobody's found worthy, well, then the devil will just, you know, cause havoc and we'll all be doomed. If you look at some writings and some scholars and different readings, you'll find this is kind of the, the, the theme. Why would he be weeping when he saw no one worthy? But then one of the elders said to him, and he said, I went much because I couldn't find anyone worthy to open a scroll. And he says, one of the elders said to me, do not weep. Behold the lion of the tribe of Judah. Can I just pose that question? Who is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. That's reference to Jesus. Okay? You've also heard it said now there's a, there's a, the, the enemy, the devil, goes around about like a roaring lion. He's not the lion. He just goes about, he mimics, he copies. Somebody said when Jesus whipped him at Calvary, uh, uh, you know, he, he's just a defeated foe right now. He just, you know, he really can't do anything to God's people. If you don't let him, he can't do a thing to you. Amen. He can't plug you out of his hand. Amen. Nothing. He can't do anything. Unless we let him, unless we invite him, unless we open a door. Amen. We'll be talking more about that. Amen. As far as your salvation is concerned, the devil can't pull you out from heaven. He can't pull you out from the hand of God. You're going to have to be a willing recipient or participant. Are you with me tonight? Yes. And so with that said, somebody asked me, you know, when we first uh, uh, came, and they said, now, do you believe in eternal security? I said, absolutely, yes, as long as you stay in the hands of Jesus. Amen. Your security is fine, there's nothing wrong, but you've got to be the, the one holding on to his hand. Amen. And he'll hold on to you, but you're the one, 
If you don't want to, how many know you've got a free will, you can walk away. Yes. And break the heart of God. Yes. As long as you stay on that narrow road, there's nothing the devil can do. There's not a devil strong enough in, in heaven, or I mean, either in hell or the earth. No, 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 it's not. And so anyway, let's continue reading. And he says, do not weep. There's somebody there, the line of the tribe of Judah. Let's read on. The root of David. The root of David. Who's that? Jesus. Remember, he walked the, the streets of, of, of Galilee and all over through, I mean, the blind man at Jericho, the first thing out of his mouth was what? Say that with me. Son of David, have mercy on me. How did he know Jesus was the son of David? The man is blind. I believe he heard testimonies. He must have heard about this Jesus of Nazareth. And he believed. That's why he called that thou son of David, have mercy on me. He's the root of David and has prevailed. I love that. Has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose the seal, seven seals. No one can take that place. No one can take that job. There's not a pope. There's not a priest. There's not anyone that can get to that place. There is a certain religion around here that says, well, you can, you can attain God's status. How ridiculous. I mean, where did they go? Oh, my goodness. They've been in Colorado around those bushes too long. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The, the row of those things out there. <laughs> I mean, that messes with your mind, okay? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Oh, my goodness. You can... You can uh, it's, it's the folks, it's the folks you gotta, you gotta know who, you're, who, who they are. I mean, it's... it's Wolves and sheep's clothing people. Be careful. I, I'm, ne I'm not one to, to one of the, any other religion and so forth, but if they false, they teach you wrong, they need to be, ex be exposed. That's right. Amen. Amen. All over Utah, I'm sorry, it's awful of it. Right. Yeah. Believe that God, uh, Jesus, and the devil was brothers. Oh, my. Really? I thought I read throughout the scripture. I didn't find that anyway. Yeah. But now you've got to create another book. Maybe it's in there. Yeah. I guess. I'm just fed up with this kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Can we continue reading and get back to this? And it says, And behold, in the midst of the throne, and of the living creatures, remember those four around the throne, and in the midst of the elders that were sitting around, stood a lamb. There's only one that's worth. And, and he, as though it had been slain, to, to John it looked like that lamb had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into the earth. We'll talk more about those seven horns and seven eyes and seven spirits. And they all have significance. Horns stand for authority, power, kingdom. When he came, and, to, and then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. That's the Lord Jesus Christ, okay. And he came and took the scroll, okay, and then now, when he took the scroll, there were four living creatures uh, uh, and 24 elders, and they fell down before. See, this is the same scene we just saw in chapter 4. You see that? And again, they're going to fall down and they worship, and, and now they have harps in their hands, uh, first they had trumpets, other ones were using trumpets and, and the golden uh, thrones and, and so, and now they have golden bowls full of incense. What is that? The prayers of the saints. The, the 24 elders are representing you and I around the throne. Yes. Amen. And, and they have these bowls there, uh, 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 buckets or bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Fr friend, when you pray, it, it doesn't fall to the ground. It gets to heaven. It's, it's in the presence of God. Listen to this. Your prayers are not falling to the ground. And this thing about, oh, I prayed, but it felt like it hit the ceiling. That's a lie. Don't believe that. The prayer of God's people goes straight to God's throne, and it's kept ever before Him. Did you know even the tears that you cry is bottled up? God has a way of holding on to that. He's reminded of your prayers. He's reminded of your tears. Your sorrow. Listen, nothing escapes God. And it's ever before Him. The prayers of the saints. Keep on praying. Don't get weary in 
well doing. Keep on praying. I encourage God's people, come a little earlier. Come and pray on a Wednesday. Come on in. Just come in here and this is your daddy's house. Come on in. This is our place of fellowship. Come and pray. And on our prayer nights, come on out. Amen. That's the prayer. That's the power station. Uh, you, you want to find out, you look at a big train that, you know, I was always looking at a train that thing is a mile long and you go, my goodness, how does that thing move? Well, right at the front or right at the back sometimes, there's an engine department. And as long as they put the coals in there, it's still the old way, okay? And, and that little horn go, doo -doo, that thing will go. What drives that train? It's the power station. What is the strength of a church? The prayer is the power station. Prayer. Amen. Anyway, let's, let's move on. There's so much to cover. My goodness. All right. Uh, what chapter, what verse are we in? In, in verse number nine. And, and as we kind of move further down, uh, let, let's just go ahead and read that. And we're going to see more praise is breaking out. We just see the elders and the, the living creatures. I mean, they're just having a time. And, and look at here. Uh, the, the angels, if you notice, the creatures, they are saying, where is the Lamb? But there's something happening here. It says, they sang a new song, saying. That's amazing. You are worthy to take the scroll, to open the seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us. This is not the angel speaking now, this is the elder speaking. Okay, they singing and saying, all at the same time, you have redeemed us. Angels can't, they haven't been redeemed. That's right. The ones that fell is just going to, they forever gone, okay? Yeah. You realize that, right? Yeah. The devil and his angels. There's no redemption. There's no coming back for them. No wonder they're so mad at you and I. That's right. That you and I can call out to the Lord Jesus and be saved and be redeemed. Right. Wow. Okay. And so they said, have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe, every tongue, and every people, and every nation and nation. All of us around the globe. Oh, hallelujah. As we travel to different countries of the world and there are people worshiping God in their own way, you know, one, one time a brother told me, well, you know, here's how you should worship God, you know, I just know, I thought, boy, you're putting him in a box, don't you? I said, why don't you travel with me just a little bit? You're going to find out in some foreign countries far away, they don't, they don't have your songbooks here. How many know they don't have the pretty little songbook? And, and, no, no, no. They sing from what they, their, their writings are and their way of worship. How many know it's going straight to the throne of God? Yes. Amen. Don't ever try to put God in a box. Well, this is the only way He can be worshipped. No. There's only one way, though, in spirit and in truth. That's the only criteria. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Verse number 10, watch this. And it says, uh, do we have verse number 10? This is Paul. And he says, and have made us. This is what the elders are saying, okay? And you have made us what? Say that with me. King. Don't get big here. But he says, you're king and priest to our God. Wow. And we shall Rain. suffer forever. So he's made us kings. 
I said, the, the 24 elders, they, they represent you and I. Humanity. Okay, the saints of God. Thank you, Lord. And so they are saying, and it says, and verse number 11, it says, I heard the voice of many angels and the living creatures and the elders, and, and he numbers them. He says, there's just this untold number of them. Okay, by the tens, town, ten thousands. And he says, here's what they sang with a loud voice. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power. Uh, there are seven areas that they ascribe to the Lord and, and proclaim unto him. They say, listen, you are worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power. Say that with me, power. The Lamb is worthy to receive power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. <laughs> To our King, you are worthy, O Lord, the Lamb that was slain. No wonder He's worthy to open the seals. Who else? He's the one that paid for our sins. He's the one that went to the cross. How appropriate that is in the season. We even talking about that. Because He asked, who's worthy? Well, the Lamb. Who paid the price on Calvary. I'd say that's the one who'd be worthy. Who took my sins, who traded places with me. That's who was, who's worthy. Amen. Amen. Who took the keys of death, hell, and the grave and whipped the devil. I say he's worthy. Amen. Whom God raised from the dead after three days. He's alive. I say he's worthy. Amen. To receive honor and power and glory. Oh my goodness. Sometimes we don't know how to praise him. We say, come on, lift our hands and praise him. I don't know what to say. Well, bless Get a little higher. I told you about the little girl that uh, 
her little four-year-old and her daddy went downtown and they, you know, it was a busy Saturday, whatever, Friday afternoon, and they had to get in an elevator to get up there. And, the, and they were standing, you know, I'm impressed into the small little elevator. And they almost pressed the little child to the back and the, she was uncomfortable. And, and from her point of view, could you imagine what she's looking at? Oh, dear. Use your imagination. <laughs> you still have one. She's just a little four-year-old, and, and here she is from and all these adults, and that's all she sees. My goodness, not a good view. <laughs> and, and she says, Daddy, Daddy, pick me up, pick me up. I can't, uh, I'm suffocating over here. So, and so Daddy lifts her up and puts her, puts her on the shoulder, and she's above everyone else. She's, oh, just smiling, see? The pressure is gone. When, when you come up a little higher, yes. to God's point of view, to what, yes. how he sees, pressure is off. You begin to see His goodness. You begin to see faith that you can make it to the other side. Or oh, you go a little higher and you can see. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just take that little load over here. Go back to there. See something? Went to low. Get up a little higher to where He is. I know you're not like me. Yeah, man. You are crazy like this, like me. Because I've watched an ant sometimes or just a small little animal. And I'm over here watching it. And it doesn't, and there's a little wall or a brick or something, and it's trying to get to the food over here, but it, it can't see the food, but I can. I can see the whole thing, right, from my point of view. And so I'm trying to talk to the end. Hey, if you just turn over here, go, go right. You can go around and get to the food. You've never done that, have you? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> trying to help the thing out, you know, because you just can't, don't know how to get there. How the Holy Spirit, if we just listen to His voice, yes, Lord. we'll quit bumping our head. Mm. Oh, hallelujah. Okay, okay. All right, let's move on. Let's move on. And so uh, He said, Everyone in heaven, earth, under the earth, and in the sea. And they all sing the same thing. That's amazing to me. Saying, Blessing, honor, glory, power to Him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. It's true when the Bible says every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess Jesus Christ is Lord. I don't care where they are under the earth, beneath where they are, they will one day bow and say he's worthy. Yes. Worthy is the Lamb. Yes. The atheist will have to one day admit and say truly he's the Lamb that was slain. How many know revelation will come? They'll know. One that cusses God has with nothing to do with him will bow their knee one day Amen. before God because he says heaven, earth, beneath the earth, in the sea, everywhere. They all say the same thing. They have to. Chapter 6. We will not get into deep tonight into that because now we're moving in this chapter 5. As we leave chapter 4, chapter 5, now we're moving into some deep waters. Maybe a little scary, but we're going in. I'm just ready to go in a little deeper. Yeah. Don't be scared. Amen? Or hold your neighbor's hand if you are. It's going to be all right. It's going to be okay. i got good news for the child of God. It always works out good. Yeah? yeah? Romans yeah. tells us. In Romans, he says, all things work together for the good. Yeah. Oh, huh? Romans uh, 828. Uh, 828. All things. Yes. It just, it has to work out together for the good to those who love God. Anybody yes. love God in the house? Oh, <laughs> then it's for you. Anybody feel like you're called according to God's purpose? How many, when you answer the call, when God calls you, yes. when you touch it, your heart, you came. Oh, yes. you, you're in, I mean, it's guaranteed. It has to work out. Yes. Amen. So why worry about it? Amen. And now we're moving into the introducing tri tribulation period, okay? We've watched past, we've watched present, what John was seeing, but now he's going to tell us about the future, what's coming. And at this point, beloved, I believe the saints are with him. If the elders are there, we're there. Because they're not going to go ahead of us. Can I help you with that? If uh, he said, listen, the dead in Christ here, yeah, they're going to rise first, 
But we who, which are alive and remain, Thessalonians tells us, will, will, will be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. And, and so one is not going to go ahead and the other one not and so forth. We all want to be there. Amen? Uh, in our glorified bodies. I'm not talking about when you die today and you, in, you know, you haven't, you, your body had not taken on immortality just yet. That's going to happen when the graves open. It's a whole different subject we're going to cover. Amen? But I just know if the elders are there, in their bodies, wearing robes, having crowns, doing all of this stuff, can play and do all this stuff. I believe the saints are there. Yeah. We are there. But now, as we move into the tribulation, uh, this hour that's coming upon the earth, and I, I just have to believe the rapture or the catching away of the saints is, is upon us right now. It's, it's upon us. It's coming. It's going to happen. The rapture, somebody put it this way, is the evacuation of believers. You believe that? Yes. We're going to be evacuated out there. We're going to leave this place. We all gave me a dream some time back, and it was literally like an evacuation. To me, to my mind, it was like a big ship. You, just, you know, you just you were on this thing, and it took off. And, and, and uh, looking back over the earth, really, you could just see destruction everywhere. I saw man's hands reaching up, screaming, what about me, what about me? Okay, so now we're moving into chapter 6, chapter number 6. Amen. I hope this is interesting to you as it is me. I just love uh, to, to get into Revelation. Now, there are still many areas left. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sensing the Lord would have us uh, take some time uh, in that to, to, to take a little break because we're going to cover all of the, the 21 and just see how the Lord will lead us there, okay? I don't want you to get tired or like, oh my goodness, are we still in Revelation? <laughs> uh, it's kind of a cool book because it's kind of telling you where you, it's like opening the morning newspaper, okay? But turning on the TV and, and CNN is telling you all that's happening. Well, this is more accurate than CNN or Fox or anyone else, okay? So now we're moving in to chapter number 6. And let's read together. Chapter number 6. And he says, I saw, he said, I saw then when the Lamb opened one of the seals and I heard one, so he's now opening the seals, okay? They found who was worthy. And I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, Come and see. Come and see. Hmm. What are they going to see? And he said, I looked and behold, a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow, crown was given him, and went out conquering to conquer. Now he's going to open some seals, and he's just giving us a description, a quick description of it. I'll give you some of that if, as we move forward, okay? Now, as we move into this tribulation or the apocalypse, which literally means the, the final destruction of the world, really. Is the meaning of all that. So we're moving into that area. And it says, when I opened that seal, the first one, it was a white horse. The rider on it was conquering. It was a, it was a conquering the earth, moving all over quickly. Uh, running over anything and anyone who would stand in, in its way. That means that's conquering something, okay? Like a, a, a military, a military uh, term. Now, many scholars, if you look at different... Uh, 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 have, have studied and, 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 and read their books and different things, you have different views on this particular one. One, um, back in the day, was that this was Jesus conquering at, at the last uh, uh, call and bringing people in, conquering the, the, not only the earth, but people, and bringing them in. Well, if you really study scripture now, and, and you kind of compare from when he talks in, in, in Matthew, and, and through the Gospels, Jesus, you can really compare that, and start looking at that. This is not the same white horse as what, what is described in Revelation 19. I want you to study that out for yourself too, please. Just don't take my word for it. <laughs> but as we study together, okay, there's wisdom when we do that. So at this time when he 
Because just a moment ago, he sees the lamb slain and so forth and has done the work. And now the angels or the elders are saying, you have redeemed us, you've saved us. How many know when Jesus on the cross said, it is finished, his work on this planet earth was finished. Nothing left to be done. He's done it all. You couldn't get him to come die again. His work was done. Conquered death, hell and the grave. Rose, and now his job right now is what? He's seated on the right hand of the Father. That's what John saw. He described that. Because they give glory and honor to him who sit on the throne and to the Lamb. Are you still with me today? So I want you to kind of look at that. That's thought provoking, but it's but as you study it out, you'll see it. It's, he's not talking about the rider or the white horse we get excited about in Revelation 19. We'll, we'll get there. We're, we're going to shout. Don't worry about it. But this rider, how many know the devil has been from the beginning a copycat, an imposter? A, a, he, he always wants to mimic or, you know, like a roaring lion. Or he, he's, he's, the, he's a prophet, but he's a false prophet. He, he's, he's not Christ. He's the Antichrist. So he's always, if you look into, uh, and I don't want you to, for this you can take my word for it. <laughs> if you've been involved in demonology, or the worship of demons, or Satan, there are people doing that. I don't want you to go delve in that. Because for some it could be a trap. You start studying into that and deeper into it. You better be, oh my goodness, okay? covered by the blood. But anyway, when you study a little bit or know a little bit about, because we've I've dealt with that uh, over the years, uh, you know, God has just, as we traveled from, from in different countries, more so in other countries than here. Here the old devil is just dressed up a little different, put up makeup and whatever, put on a suit. In other countries he still has, a, you know, the ancestral kind of stuff going on. And so it's, it's kind of open and it's out there. But nevertheless, it's the same thing. And when you, when you hear the testimonies of those that has come out of the occult, when the, those that come out, they also have a three uh, of everything. They also work in numbers. Just like uh, uh, being holy before God and not touch the unclean thing, not drink blood, not drink any of that, they do the exact opposite and they follow exactly the opposite of what holiness is. They have to be filthy and filthy still. Okay, if you want to know more, come see us about that, okay? So, in, in, even in tongues, there's a false one also. In prophecies, there's false, evil. On television, I'll give you a little hint. There are people who tell you they, can, they are medium, mediums and they can see into the future, so they have an audience and, and we give them, a, we give them a, you know, a platform on television. And they become rich because they can now tell you that your grandfather uh, who died so and so and he usually wore a certain hat and he's saying all oh, his, well that's a lying spirit. That's right. Don't be fooled into that stuff. Right. Just because they can pick on some things. How many of the spirits know about you? They know that they've been here since forever. That's a whole other teaching I'm going to get in on sometime. Mm -hmm. But people, be, Christians, that that's not rooted really, I mean, like we should be. Right. Fall for this stuff. And you get, it's a trap set for believers. And if you have, and you, you know, think this was awesome or even called in or whatever, I'm going to ask you, ask the Lord to forgive you for that. Ask the Lord to, 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 to get you out of those things. Don't, don't open that door. Don't go down that path. Okay? Into the occult, into... I mean, there are certain games people get involved in, the Ouija board, the, the, all these kind of things, uh, swinging of rings, and, and uh, I mean, there's just a whole mess out there. And, and the little beliefs that they get into, if you break the glass, it's, you know, the, the mirror, it's a seven-year curse. I don't vote for curses. Come That's on. been broken when I got saved. Come on. The devil can't put a curse on me. I got the blood of Jesus. Come on. Come on. So Christians, come on. You know what I'm talking about? You know, just a little, little puppies over here, and the devil just ride over us. No, they can't. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I saw a black cat run across the street. Great, he didn't get hit. Let him go. You know, he made it. Woo, yeah. Come on, we, we're believers. Yeah. Christians, you don't go by all those little false things. Because if you do, the enemy loves to hold you captive right there. 
people hold you in bondage. Right. It's an opening. I don't know how we got there, but that's, that's just the truth. Right. I'll have, later on, talk to you about when you go visit different places, towns and, and cities and overseas and so forth. Just don't buy just anything you see out there right. and it looks pretty and so I'm going to bring it home. That's right. You bring it in. Oh, trouble you don't need into your house. I travel to Egypt, I'll say this because this is all part of what we're talking about. Traveled to Egypt many years ago through Israel on a bus ride. It was wonderful, the pyramids and everything. And boy, they sell you just about anything out there. And, I, and it was beautiful and, and the, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, oh. Now the pyramid in itself, uh, you know, there are certain things uh, uh, I would help you if, you if you need to know a little bit more about certain things. But uh, there were just things that was given over to demon worship. It was their part of their worship. And if you don't know that, and I didn't know about certain things, and I brought that home. And uh, did you know, I mean, it was in my closet, and there was just something about this thing that I couldn't get peace over this thing. And uh, stuff just would... I mean, I can't begin to tell you some of the things that were just in prayer. I couldn't break through. It was just uh, it, it, Elise and I we could not get along. It was this and that and the other, all kind of junk. And the Lord would, you know, in prayer would point out and said, clean out your closet. And I wouldn't know what that was. I thought, what in the world? And one day I did go there and I saw this little, what was it? I think it was a, I'm trying to, uh, some Egyptian mummy or queen or something. I don't know what it was. And my eyes went to that and I knew. I just knew that's the problem. I took that thing out, went outside, and I uh, took my little sleep shot. <laughs> crushed that thing to pieces. Got rid of it. And you say, well, that's just silly. No, there's some things you need to watch. What we are getting involved with. And things you read, things you listen to. Oh, another subject. It's true. See, he says to us, come out from among them. Be separate. Touch not the unclean thing. There's a reason why he says that, right? Yes. Don't touch that stuff. Me and Elisa constantly have a conversation over because I feel like the Lord is pricking my heart and I want, I want to remain sensitive. Sometimes I ignore some, you know, we, how we do. We think, oh, it's just me. Yeah. But even the places we eat, uh, that we have to be careful of. And, and, and know, it's kind of going into some other areas, but uh, if you know or they display their fallen gods there, right. she was laughing the other day that uh, when we were younger, I'd love, uh, you know, some of the Asian foods and so forth, and I'd go in and, and they have this cat that moves the hand or whatever. Or the, or the Buddha dude sits there and I just couldn't stand it. But yeah. Now in my ignorance, all I thought was if I could just turn the Buddha that way. <laughs> you know? Because when you're at the counter, he's facing you. And so that bothered me. So I just would go and just take him physically and move him to look at the wall. <laughs> I thought maybe that's cool, I could just do that. Or take the cat or whatever and just move the whole thing. And, uh, <laughs> And she said, well, you get, get in trouble with the weird out. Well, then that's okay. <laughs> but because, you know, I want God to, 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 I don't want to become um, numb to the touch of the Spirit of God. When He touches you, when He reminds you, when He, I want you to be sensitive. Remain sensitive. Because you, you start ignoring this, ignoring that, honey, ignoring that, honey, no. Later on, you don't even feel anything anymore. Mm -hmm. Our hearts are seared. We, we don't lost. That's the, that's the worst place to be, is not yes. feel His presence. Sure. I know, I, you can't go without that. When the Lord tells your heart, when your conscience yes. speaks to you, yes. pay attention to that. Yes. Amen. I'm not saying, you now there's another area where people get into, oh, there's a demon behind every bush. Yeah. That's silliness also, that's crazy. Okay? <laughs> anyway, it's a good teaching one of these days we've got to get into. Amen. All right, all right. <clears throat> so number one is that horse and rider. So when you look at this particular one in chapter number six, he's the imposter, he's the dictator, he's the power hungry, conquering. And that's what the Antichrist is going to do. 
Right. Amen. That's what he looks like. How many know he's going to appear to be a man of peace? He's going to be a, appear to be all of all of all the people's going to just love this guy. And he's going to allow the Jews to build the temple. And he's going to have all this wonderful stuff happening suddenly. Are you still with me? Yeah. We've got to close. Our time's up. Do I have another minute? One yeah, moment, please. Yes. Okay, I can't go through all of them, but I'm just going to touch on them so we can get deeper in our next one, okay? Horse number two is the fiery red horse. And it's rider. The rider thereof will take, literally, remove peace from the earth. How many know that's going on? You can see that's going on. But it says he will remove peace from the earth and he will have power to kill. I mean, have, uh, kill people killing one another. You, you see that happening, okay? The beginnings of it. But I tell you, we, we're moving into a time and, and I don't believe you and I will be part or see that, you know, but it's going to come. You talk about nuclear. You talk about uh, uh, chemical warfare. You talk about all this kind of stuff. Uh, these viruses that's springing up, I think they'll just be, they'll just be crazy. We'll, we'll talk more about that. Number three we're going to talk about is the black horse. Uh, he, he, the, the rider of that one with the scales, it's, it's talks of famine, okay? It's going to take away food. There'll be a scarcity of food. People will, I mean, we're going to, they, there's a time coming, a sh shortage of food. That the world has never seen, they've not seen anything like it. We're reading scripture about some time and times of famine and times of those. Listen, what's what's coming upon the earth is going to be so horrific. I mean, uh, we talked the other day about the Great Depression of the, uh, if you lived during that time, uh, there's people who said, "Well, I don't even, I didn't even know it was that." We just kind of, you know, uh, the stock market crashing. And, and I think we had a taste of some of that here. Uh, was it? Uh, I think it was the worst in, in many years. Was uh, during our 2009, 2008 when it crashed in nine, ten, eleven, twelve kind of. It was a tough time for many, and, and, and a lot of people have not come out of that just yet. And so, but what's coming upon the earth, you can't even compare. I mean, it's it's, it's coming. Okay. Uh, the riots in the streets, the, the, all of those things. What's number four? is the pale horse or the gray horse, uh, color of green. And, and so uh, some, some scholars would, would describe that uh, meaning a certain nation that's rising up. Uh, we could probably get a little bit deeper into that, but that's the one that the rider is one who brings death. And it's, it's a carrier of death and of Hades and of hell. Of, you know, and so as we get into that, what does that even mean? Um, is this horse number four? Wow. The name of him who sat on that was death. His name was death. And Hades followed with him. Hmm. And power was given to him over a fourth of the earth to kill with the sword. He's going to wipe out. I mean, you, you're talking about a fourth. One fourth. What are we, uh, about seven billion people on the planet today? What is a fourth of that? Goodness gracious. Hundreds of millions of people. It's going to be slaughtered, going to be killed. Listen. Prophecy is going to be fulfilled, friend. It's going to happen to this planet. It's going to happen. To kill with the sword with, and with hunger, with death. And by the beasts of the earth. So we're moving into a time into, you know, there are, there's a, there's a span uh, that we're moving into, into tribulation. Three and a half years. Some believe, well, the rapture will take place before. Others say, well, it will be mid, on this sort of the mid trip, mid -trip. or post, mm -hmm. uh, pre, mid, and post. And, um, and on all of them, all of them are well, I mean, they'll, they'll give you scripture, you know. Please don't be, I'm going to encourage you, do not be in an argument with people uh, concerning those areas. Uh, try not to be, it's, it's not fruitful anyway uh, to get in any argument with people. If they just don't see your way, that's okay, love them anyway. Okay? And, and, and ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to come 
and speak to Bible scholars. We, we have several in here that are highly respected and believe God uh, speaks to them and they have wisdom how to divide the word of truth, amen, to rightly divide this word, to bring it out. So uh, feel free to ask. Don't, don't just sit there and assume things. Or take somebody's word, what you heard on television, or some. Always double check anything that is said from this pulpit or any other one with yes. this word. Yes. It has to line. Anybody saying anything has to line up with this word. Yes. God helps. I want to be very careful. Anyone we give a chance to come up here, as 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 God has placed us as pastor, it's my job to protect the sheep. Yeah. Yeah. Protect God's people. And if there's anybody going to come with a, another faith and it's coming as people want to come with different doctrines Paul says it's doctrines of demons okay and so we want to make sure we stay within the pages of this book yes. when you're in those pages you, you, you are safe amen so yeah. next week we're going to get into some deepest things the Lord bless you